When I was growing up, Apple was this kind of magical place where they were inventing the future. How do you imagine nothing's future to be? I feel like that would be a very sad future. What were the biggest challenges you faced? One of our products that we were developing, we canceled. We spent a lot of money making it and then we never released. You seem to be inspired by Apple and have a dislike for a lot of things as well. Tim Cook is one of the best CEOs. It feels like nothing is trying to go against Apple. It's not that interesting anymore. For me, it's about having the strongest design team and then trusting them. A lot of big brands now communicating like people. I think in the opposite way my personal brand doesn't need to grow if the company can grow without me being in front of cameras that means the company is very strong i have a very contrarian view i don't have to show up in public anymore ultimately the value creation for us comes from skin that mm. we can put on a smartphone like a deep brand so we're, we're going to be bigger than deep brand <laughs> <laughs> but yeah deep brand does not make their own like they make very less design so we have like 50 60 designs mm -hmm. and uh like it's right now in India, it's the number one uh, skin brand. Oh, what is it called? It's called Layers. Layers. Yeah, Layers. And you make it for phones, but also other products? Yeah, we make it for laptops, iPads, tablets, and uh, phones. Phones is the biggest mark. Mm. Nothing is, uh, nothing audience likes these skins a lot. Yeah, we have a very early adopter audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to try new things. Yeah. They're excited I, about new things. Yeah, I think the risk taking ability is a little more mm. uh, in the nothing more. Hopefully we can expand that audience. Yeah, 100%. So how are you thinking of expanding the audience? Uh, I mean, it's, it's products and marketing, right? So how do we develop more exciting products for our users? And how do we get more people to learn about us? I think like when, let's say I see this nothing phone, for mm. example, it does not look like, and if I put it against like any, if I put it against Samsung or iPhone or any other brand, this looks like a, a new, different product. It does not look like a, the everyday phone. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one thing that you have done brilliantly, and I've been following your content, uh, not just for your content, your products and everything. Um, I was a big fan of OnePlus when it came out, mm -hmm. the initial hype. And um, one thing I uh, was not done before OnePlus was, the transition from a cult enthusiast brand to like a traditional flagship. I think the OnePlus team uh, and you also did brilliantly well. So I think it's not necessarily transitioning from a niche product to a mass market product. Mm -hmm. I think if we keep making the best possible product mm -hmm. and as our team gets stronger, as our capabilities get stronger, making the product better and better, and then having more people learn about us, the transition becomes quite gradual, quite natural. So that's kind of how I think about it. I don't think about it like today we're at a niche, niche stage, tomorrow we're going to be a, a huge, huge brand. Okay. Yeah. So you talk about um, like expanding the audience base. So how do you expand the audience base? Is it like very slowly, slowly? To be honest, I think we just need, um, I'm not a marketing expert, so we need to get Are some, <laughs> we need to get some great marketing talent on board to help us. But I mean, it's you just, figure out who your users are mm -hmm. and who you're targeting and you know what kind of channels they use and talk to them about your brand. It's weird you say you're not an, a marketing expert because I think you're brilliant at marketing and you're very different at marketing also. So how do you call yourself like um, in the business of nothing? Like what are you? I just do whatever I need to do at any given point in time. So I kind of see myself as a janitor. Today, if our finance team needs to be built up, I spend time doing finance. If our marketing team needs to be built up, I spend time doing marketing. But I think ultimately the value creation for us comes from product and technology because we're a tech company and we need to start developing products that are more and more different on the market. So over time, I need to be focusing more and more of my time on technology and product. I also met um, the team. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, beautiful. Uh, all the small details that you've been working on. Like not just you, the whole team wanted it to be more like insect sounds mm -hmm. uh, uh, when it came to EA1. And uh, it does sound like that. And uh, it, it is very new. If I see from the outside, I think uh, I see Carl as a marketing expert. Mm. And it seems like this whole big company, they try and do all these uh, big things. But when you see it from the inside, you feel like you can see all the small details, all the small pieces working together and they all function so beautifully well in this product. Maybe I should see myself more like a product manager 
Yeah. And the product that I'm managing is actually the company because the company is also a product. Yeah, hundred percent. That we bring out into society. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, um, I've heard you talk a lot about Apple. Mm. Yeah, and both positively and negatively. You seem to be inspired by Apple, and you seem to like have a dislike for a lot of things as well. I think there's uh, many different apples because in various stages of their development, yeah. they were very different companies. Mm. So I grew up with a different apple to what the apple is today. When I was growing up, Apple was this kind of magical place where they were inventing the future. Every new generation of product was really exciting. Today, they're they're making great products, some of the best, but they're like the default choice. If you want to buy the best computer, Apple. Best phone, Apple. It's not that interesting anymore. And if you look at their business, they're more focused on kind of their different units. So they mm. have a hardware, software, content, services. They're um, developing a bank. They're developing a health business unit. They're yeah. developing a mixed reality unit. So, I think over time, the the kind of focus on product innovation has become less important for them versus business model innovation. And that's fine. I think Tim Cook is one of the best CEOs. Mm -hmm. He's taking the Apple share price to really you know unprecedented levels. So he's not doing anything wrong. But I just think today there's no nobody else taking that vacuum that Apple has left. Yeah. Um, how do you imagine nothing's future to be? Because like you said, Apple has taken a very business direction, I would say. They are becoming a bank and all of these things. Um, if nothing were to evolve, how would it go? Like from phone one to phone two? Because uh, if, if you want my opinion, like from what I see and uh, what I feel from your viewpoints, I, I would say I imagine nothing as a consumer electronics brand. So I, I would imagine having like an air conditioner made by nothing and uh, a lot of these small consumer products like refrigerators because they all need a design refresh i feel mm. i feel like that would be a very sad future <laughs> for me um just following other people and making whatever products they made before i think you know we're, we're a tech company yeah i think a tech company has to do a couple of things either you have to enable the user the consumer to do something they weren't able to before yeah. bring something new or you have to be much more efficient. So you can enable people to do things much faster than before, or you need to be much cheaper. Hmm. Some technology that they previously couldn't afford, they can now afford. If, you, if you're a tech company and you're not doing any of those, you're not a real tech company. So I think for me, rather than building a lot of these, um, I would say not very differentiated products, very commoditized products like mm -hmm. air purifier, vacuum robot, whatnot, I would rather focus on technology and innovating on top of that. What do you find um, the most interesting pieces of technology? I think, uh, or maybe some areas where you would imagine that there is a gap, uh, there is something that needs to be fixed. I think for one, uh, something we thought about a lot recently is mobile OS. Yeah. So 100%. mobile OS has not really changed since Actually, you know, I don't know if you remember in Symbian days, it used to still be like this. There were uh, some apps, yeah. some app icons. You launch the app and it's a full screen app. And then you go back to the home screen, you, ch you change an app. I think the last big innovation in mobile OS was App Store. So all of a sudden you had this thing in your phone that allowed you to make it infinitely expandable. You had so many things you could download that like features that you didn't have when you bought the phone. Mm. I think that's the last thing that happened. And that was 2008. I also agree um, because when IAC, because I've been in this tech space for the past 10 years and I was very deep in it. Um, like I was using Cyanogen mod. I was also building custom ROMs. Mm -hmm. I was also a software developer. And um, I also feel like in the initial days, there was a lot of development. There was a lot of experimentation, mm -hmm. not just by the phone companies, but also by the developers. Right now, it has kind of stagnated. When I say like, I also feel to some extent, um, nothing's positioning and you also like talk about it a lot i've seen you review uh, iphones and uh, a lot of apple products it feels like nothing is trying to go against apple and um, it wants to be a competitor to apple but um, the one thing that is iphones are very good at is uh, software so like um, talking about the software what do you think needs to be done to compete with ios or like um, what do you think is like what what is the next innovation i think somebody needs to kind of restart where things left off i think today um i get it the app store came out 
-hmm. it became very profitable to make apps it became very profitable especially to make apps where you keep people for as long as possible on the app so you can sell more advertising and everybody makes money the app developer makes money the platform makes money but i think it's at the expense of the consumer yeah 100 percent. I was so we're just mindlessly scrolling our social media every day because we're addicted to it the mini dopamine hits it's like uh not very different from a nicotine addiction. So how can we break that? How can we put more power back into the hands of the consumers to allow them to be more intentional about their device usage? I think that's something really worth uh, looking into. But I think your example of us wanting to challenge Apple, I think we know we're just a very small company. And Apple is a 47-year-old company, and they're the most valuable company in the world. So we have a long way to go. but. We do have a high ambition level, that's for sure. I also agree uh, to some extent. I feel um, the vision of, let's say, Android, to some extent is um, for people to use Android more. It's like for them to use Google services more. And um, uh, that's a little bit evident. And um, I think will nothing ever build its own OS? Uh, or it would like work on the open source OS and uh, build itself up from there. I hope we can work together with Android to make it more competitive against Apple. Yeah. If you look at Apple, they're actually gaining a lot of market share all over the world. And they have a very strong services lock-in. <laughs> so after you're starting to use their various services, it becomes really hard to leave. Yeah, also, now they also have banks now. <laughs> yeah, and if this continues, then there will be less and less innovation because everybody's just going to get an Apple product. So how can we work together with the Android ecosystem to make it more competitive against Apple? Hmm. I think that's uh, where we would play. I also feel one thing, when I'm using an Android phone, I get like 50 notifications. But when I'm using an iPhone, I get a lot less notifications. And um, maybe it has something to do with how uh, the OS is set up. But um, I have a lot more questions for you. When I see nothing, uh, I see two or three things. I see design. It's one of the more evident mm -hmm. ways of communication yep. from the brand. Because I feel like how you have set up nothing as a brand, the way of communication is uh, the design. Like I feel like uh, when I enter the office, I could see like transparency. It also translates into the product. I would want to ask, are you a designer yourself? Uh, where do you get inspiration from? How or did you think about uh, the design language, all the vision and everything? I think in this stage, we need to focus on design because it's the fastest way to make a difference as a startup company. Mm -hmm. But I think over time, like I mentioned, a tech company needs to have technology that nobody else has access to. Mm -hmm. This way, when consumers pick our products, there's something unique that they can only get from nothing products and not other products. Mm -hmm. So in terms of design vision, for me, it's about having the strongest design team and then trusting them versus me being a good designer. But I, you can see me more like an editor so if the design team makes something, I can maybe help tweak something yeah. just a little bit because maybe I have more experience in the smartphone industry or um, other consumer categories that our designers don't have. So maybe they didn't think about a certain problem that users might face with a design. Mm -hmm. And um, what about the design? Because like we also um, to, are to some extent a design company. We also design products. We uh, create clothing and we create all these skins. Um, uh, these are like uh, products that uh, uh, you can put uh, over phones. But like the question arises in our, our minds a lot. Ki, like design is very subjective. Uh, design is something. Check that. Design for yourself first. Never speculate what others might like. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a it's a little subjective, and sometimes what I would like can be very wrong. Uh, mm. Like uh, we struggle with. So how do you like make the calls? this is the right design because something that you might like can be wrong uh, for a majority part of the audience and uh, also because nothing uh, um, also i want to talk about a little more ki, um, it's a very international brand so it becomes a lot more difficult i feel i think you gotta develop a very acute sense of the consumer so for me i probably read every single comment online about our brand uh, so i kind of know what consumers are always thinking mm -hmm. and keep that in mind when looking at design. Um, it also comes with experience and time. Maybe you release a product, it doesn't really work, but then you learn for the next time. But I think the phone one was a, like a big product. And um, 
one thing i saw a lot of new startups even big companies they first launch in one country mm. then uh, they go to the next country and then they expand to like five countries your approach was very different uh nothing phone was was in multiple countries at once uh how did that come about uh i think in the f- early stage it's okay to just make it available in as many geographies mm-hmm. as possible but then now we need to figure out which markets we should really invest in building a stronger team investing in brand awareness to get a bigger market share so i think uh that's our path because I, a, a product is a product no matter which country you go to if it's a good product in country a it's probably a good product in country b so unless there's a lot of regulatory issues or uh, barriers to entry like for instance we didn't launch the phone one in the US yeah. because working with the carriers had a lot of barriers as long as there's no barriers we should be available in as many geographies as possible makes sense if you like is very different when it comes to um, uh, not just nothing a few uh, brands that have seen come up uh, in the past 2 3 years is how they communicate because uh, for a huge part of time uh, i believe brands were communicating like a they are this this big company and mm. they were communicating more of in like passive voice they're like hey this is how you use the product but now it's more very personal it's like um, the founder of twitter is like hey how do you like this feature and uh, hey uh, this is a meme and people are reacting to it and i i feel like a lot of big brands also are now communicating like people mm-hmm. uh, they're just like we made this try this let us know how you feel about it and uh, that's what i also feel when i see nothing uh, i see kalpe yeah i mean i think you can do that when you're a smaller company mm-hmm. um the definition of smaller company is f- kind of fluid but if you look at tesla now yeah they're also invest- investing in marketing during the last earnings call Elon Musk said now we got to invest more money in marketing so we can grow our uh, grow our revenue so mm-hmm. the, i think it always comes to a certain point where if you want to keep growing you have to act more like a traditional brand over time mm-hmm. well, i would say twitter is still a very big company twitter yeah. tesla it's um, undergoing a lot of change yeah definitely and i think if you make a product that's very different mm-hmm. then it it will kind of carry itself but for us the smartphone is not a new category it's been around for a long time and people already have their favorite brands so using that um, more organic approach is actually much harder than it is with uh, tesla because they were the first with an electric vehicle mm, makes sense you're already entering a very uh, competitive space that's yeah a mature market yeah mature market uh, when i was using like let, let's say uh, the early oneplus phones or when i used the nothing phone I feel like there's a part of who Carl is in the phone itself and it feels like the same for um uh iPhones uh when you use an iPhone you can understand how Steve Jobs thought of things it's actually a huge team yeah. behind the product for for yeah. both companies so maybe the CEO is more like the curator but the product is put together by hundreds and if not thousands of people Yeah, I I agree. Um but to some extent the DNA um of the brand is like um a very I don't know how to describe it. It's a very like enthusiast geek brand. Mm. Um and it feels like we can see a little bit of um who Carl is when we use the product. When you're starting out, I think you have to be a niche brand in the beginning. Yeah. because you're going to speak to your uh, core audience but over time the brand needs to grow because as a company we have to keep if we want to make a bigger and bigger impact on the world we need to have our products in the hands of as many people as possible what's like uh, what, what were the biggest uh, uh, challenges you faced uh, when building nothing or like any any like big challenges uh, throughout your life um this is definitely the most challenging thing i've ever done Uh, give me specific give me a story give me a, something i mean in the beginning we we made the ear one that was our first product yeah. and believe it or not it was very very difficult to convince people to work with us be it both um the suppliers manufacturers, manufacturers yeah, yeah. but also employees 
So it was a new company. We had a really cheap office. Didn't really look credible. Nobody had heard, heard about the brand before. We didn't have a lot of investors. So all the factories were like, why, why? Like, why are you doing this? There's so many headphones on the market. How are you going to be different? Why is it going to sell? Um, employees were also just really not applying to work here because it's so high risk, right, for a small company. We had a, a really bad software engineer that we reluctantly hired because we had no, nobody better who quit on the second day because he had a better job. Like, that's the kind of environment that we started in. So every day facing something negative, like a negative news. Oh, today this supplier rejected us. Today this uh, employee rejected us. That was a really tough period. Like you, 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 we, we didn't even know whether we could make our first product. But in each stage of our development, I think we'll face similar, similarly challenging things, but on a bigger and bigger scale. To some extent, we don't see um, the challenges or the tough times. Um, because people, I don't know, uh, people can relate to stories a lot. I feel like people want to see even the failures and even the tough times. And um, uh, it would have been awesome uh, if we were, like, if we could see uh, mm. the whole journey of nothing. And um, Actually, one of our products that we were developing in the early days, we canceled. So it was a failed product. And we're actually planning a, a YouTube video explaining how we failed. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would yeah. be awesome. I, I saw a lot of experimental things in the, in your, uh, in the office, uh, in the design studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also saw uh, the video where you were showing the Nerf gun and uh, all these other uh, yeah. products. That we had a real failure, not like an idea that we didn't do. Like an idea that we tried to make and we spent a lot of money making it and then we never oh. released. Yeah. But um, how, how long, uh, how, how big do you think a personal brand can go? Um, because your your brand is like you have a nice fan following. I, I see people stopping outside. Uh, I think they're just places. just wondering why there's a camera here. Actually, <laughs> no, no, you're you're famous. You're famous. People, um, because I'm a fan. Uh, I would say I look up to you. Uh, I look up to you for inspiration. And uh, uh, there's a lot of people who want to see uh, what you are about to do because. I believe there's not a lot of stories when it comes to mm. smartphones. Uh, it's a very transactional what a lot of companies are doing and, and uh, especially in tech. I'm not connected to any air conditioner. I'm not connected mm -hmm. to any other products. Only a few companies, maybe Dyson, Apple, um, uh, nothing is one of them. So yeah, so uh, that's that. I think in the opposite way, I hope my personal brand doesn't need to grow. Mm -hmm. If the company can grow without me being always uh, in front of cameras, that means the company is very strong. That means our products are very strong, and it means our marketing team is very strong, it means our technology roadmap is very solid. So I actually, I, but I have to, I have to be the spokesperson right now, because mm -hmm. I need to make more people aware of the brand, but I think once we get to a certain level, if we're successful, I don't have to show up in public anymore. Do you want to show up in public? Nope, no. but I have to. But I think you should, uh, I think, like, because it is very inspiring um, uh, for a lot of people to see how uh, things go uh, inside of a founder's mind. Yeah, I and think it uh, creates a lot of leverage for us. Yeah, 100%. Because there's not a lot of other companies we can do this. But if we're really, really strong as a team, then I'll, I'll become less necessary. I think I have a very contrarian view. Um, I think like every brand is attached to a person um, or like different people. And I feel like in the next 10, 15 years, uh, the people who are going to be the face of brands are going to be the founders. Because currently it's like actors or it's like celebrities or it's like footballers mm -hmm. who are the face of the brands. I, th I think people can see through all of it because of social media. And I think um, it's going to be the founders who will have to uh, present uh, their brand. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a lot more authentic and people can connect with all the stories and it's a lot more powerful, I feel as well because i see a lot of youtubers building brands and the intent and the impact that uh, even i we sell clothing uh, mm -hmm. and we sell all these products the impact that we have i don't this it's very tough to compete with us mm -hmm. um because we have like we can communicate directly to the audience we can just tell them this is how it is so i think um it's going to be a lot more impactful um the one-on-one -on -one communication uh, that 
been on Twitter. I think it, it is impactful, right? Yeah. But I think at the same time, a company like Apple doesn't need the founder anymore. That means they built a really good business. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know. I like a good story. One challenge, I think, um, uh, nothing already um, might face is like uh, the competition. And how do you see navigating your way through this tough market? I think we're so small. Mm-hmm. So whatever a competitor does doesn't really impact us. And also whatever happens in the market, like now the smartphone market is not growing anymore. It's actually becoming smaller and smaller for every year. But that doesn't impact us because we're so tiny, right? So I think our own actions, our own strategies, they will impact us much more than what our competitors do. Like if we make a mistake with our next product, that's going to have very, very negative re- repercussions for us, more, more so than what a competitor does. So I think it's too early to think about competition. I think we need a clear vision, clear North Star on where we're going and then, you know, take it step by step. Once we're 10% market share, Mm -hmm. I think then we can start thinking about the competition. Yeah, makes sense. My last question, um, I see um, you talk a lot about like anime and um, all of these characters. What's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, Probably Squirtle. Squirtle. uh, It's like when you're playing the game, I guess... Charmander is the easiest one yeah. as a starter. Bulbasaur is the hardest one. Squirtle is like kind of in the middle uh, and just looks really badass. I don't know. Um, but I want to ask, like, is there any story where you got inspired from, let's say, an anime or uh, like something very unusual and um, it ended up being in the company or it ended up impacting the product? Uh, not explicitly, I think, but I tweeted about this a while ago. Yeah. There's another Pokemon called Magikarp. Yeah. It's like a useless fish. It doesn't have any abilities. It needs its team members, other Pokemon to help it grow. Mm-hmm. But if you grow it past a certain level, it becomes a dragon. It becomes like super strong. So that's like a, I think a great story of persistence. You might be weak, but you keep growing and with people supporting you and you keep improving and one day you become really strong. Yeah, I hope uh, nothing becomes very strong as well. And it was great talking to you. But um, I wish you the best of luck. And it Thank was great you so talking much. To you. And it was great talking to the team and uh, seeing the studios and uh, the shop and everything. Nice. nice. Great meeting you. Great meeting you.